Hi, this is Chris and Reti, and over the next 10 minutes I'm going to be giving part of a guide to reading court decisions for politics students. And in this first video I'm going to look at how to find court decisions, and once you've found them, how to cite them in some of your academic work. Subsequent videos will look at how to identify the parties involved and the winners of particular legal cases. And after that, I'll go on to look at how we can identify disagreement between judges as to the outcome of a case. And I should start with a very obvious point, which is that how to find court decisions will depend on the court you're interested in. And so I'll be looking in this video at four different courts and a number of different searching strategies. So we could try for any particular court just Googling stuff, we could try going to the website of the courts, or for courts in England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, we could uh, um, try and, and get to aggregators like Bailey. I'll describe Bailey later. So if I start with the Supreme Court of the United States, let's suppose that I'm interested in the Supreme Court's decision on the Affordable Care Act. Um, my first strategy might be to go to the course website and if I type in Affordable Care Act in the search bar at the top, um, I'm going to get a series of results. But it looks like none of these results are actual court cases, they're all parts of the website. So I'd probably have to go to the docket search and try that search again. This is just going to restrict it to cases. And here, if I search for Affordable Care Act, I do see a number of results, I've got eight items found, um, but it's not exactly user-friendly. Uh, instead of the title being the, the title of the case, I've just got the docket number. So that's not a brilliant search strategy for the US Supreme Court. What if instead I try Googling, just go for a Supreme Court decision, Obamacare. Uh, here I get to, as the first result, a Wikipedia page. And if you scroll down to the foot of the Wikipedia page, and this is rather a long entry, as you can see. Somewhere at the foot, under the heading external links, you'll get to something called the slip opinion. That's uh, an early access version of the eventual version of records, and that is giving us really what we want, the opinion of the court, all 193 pages of it. So for the Supreme Court, at least uh, in the US, Googling might be better than going through the court website, unless you knew, do know exactly what you're doing, but then you probably don't need this video. For the UK Supreme Court, uh, let's suppose that I'm not interested in healthcare, but I am instead interested in the Supreme Court's decision on prorogation. I could try going to the Supreme Court website and again using the uh, search bar at the top. And here, my first result is not actually taking me directly to a case it's a special media landing page, but that does allow me to click through to the page for the case and to right click and open the judgment. And so here we have the, the prorogation decision and that's exactly what we want. I could of course try Googling and again, I get as the top result a Wikipedia entry. Um, this is slightly harder to navigate. We don't have uh, a single link to a court judgment. We do have multiple court judgments. The one we want is at the bottom and it is a link to the judgment, not on the Supreme Court website, but on Bailey. And Bailey is the third of my searching strategies. Bailey stands for the British and Irish Legal Information Institute. It's a charity which hosts a large number of cases um, from the UK and other related jurisdictions. It is not 
searched by Google. So Bailey, because it stores court cases and because court cases can contain sensitive individual information which may need to be redacted or changed over time, Bailey isn't uh, indexed by Google. And so the kind of search that I'm carrying out here on prorogation uh, is going to give me a whole host of um, cases which I wouldn't get necessarily through Google. Um, the only thing I would say is that the Bailey search is not really that great. Um, so I think Bailey is probably better um, for when you know exactly what you're searching for and you can use some of the links in the sidebar to narrow it down a little bit. In our case, uh, we might want to narrow it down to the Supreme Court and search within that section. Um, if I'm moving down a rank from Supreme Courts to intermediate courts like the Court of Appeal for England and Wales, um, one of my search strategies, namely going through the court website, that's no longer open to me. Uh, and so I might want to try Googling. In this case, I'm supposing that I'm interested in a decision in a libel case involving Peter Crudis, an individual who the Prime Minister has appointed to the House of Lords. If I Google Court of Appeal Peter Crudis, I get a number of links to news articles, but no necessary guarantee that when I click through those, that those will link to the court decision. And so we see here the lead, res lead result comes from the Press Gazette, but there's no link to the case. Uh, if I try going through Bailey here, I know the name of an individual, which is a bit more specific than just searching prorogation. And on its own, that might not be enough because I see a number of different results here. What I want is the one from the Court of Appeal. Um, and I'm going to go for the first one here. And that does look a little bit like a court case, court decision. But I would need to check some of the details at the top at the date the decision was handed down and check that that matches all those news stories that wrote about it. Um, last court that I'm considering is the European Court of Human Rights. And suppose I know something about a particular European Court of Human Rights case which involves wearing a crucifix at work. And I know one of the people involved worked for British Airways. I could Google and here it seems that the third item down on a Google search is from Wikipedia. And again, I could try that same strategy of going to the bottom, looking for external links. That doesn't seem as though it would give me anything. Um, so I'll go back up at the top and here highlighted in purple, because I've already visited this page, is a link to the relevant decision on Bailey. Um, I could of course try going to the court website. Oh, but that is playing up at the moment. Don't know why that should be. Uh, let's try a different version of the page. Um, same thing we saw the Supreme Court of the United States. If I search in the search bar here in the top right, I won't actually get to court decisions. I'll just get a search of the website. So what I want to do is I want to search the Hudoc database and click through there. Uh, and here I can just go for some full text search. Because I now know the name of one of the parties involved, Ueda, I'm going to search for that. And this first one here is giving me what I want. It's the English version rather than extracts or translations in French. 
Bulgarian, Hungarian, or Turkish. And so here we have the case. So I've gone through those different search strategies and a general conclusion on this might be that the more high profile the court is and the more high profile the case is, the easier it is to locate the full text of the opinion. If the case is important enough to have a Wikipedia page of its own, then Wikipedia will often contain a reasonable and reliable link to the full text of the opinion. If you are not looking at high profile cases, if you're looking at what we call a first instance court, like a, an ordinary criminal court or something that takes place in the high court, that is going to make things harder for you. But if you have a court decision, if you're using that in your research, then as part of that research, you will be citing the court decision. I have to say that citing court decisions is hard because different countries and different courts like their cases to be cited in different ways. So I'll go through some of the court decisions that we've just looked for uh, and start with my example from the Supreme Court of the United States. This is the Obamacare decision, but formally that's named after the parties involved. And so we'd refer to National Federation of Independent for Business versus Sibelius. And then we've got this funny reference here. What this means is that the decision is located in the United States Reports, which is a law journal, abbreviated as US, and it's located in volume 567, starting at page 519, and that's the volume for 2012. So this is essentially a, a type of citation which makes a lot more sense if you have a huge law library with printed bound volumes in it. If we move on to the UK Supreme Court, uh, again, we've got in italics the parties involved. And that's followed by what's called a neutral citation. That's to say it's not uh, a reference to a particular bound publication. It just features the year in square brackets, an abbreviation for the court, and this number 41, uh, which is just an ID number. I should say that um, this particular case, 2019 UKSC 41, combined two cases. And so you might see it cited in this fashion, but you might also see it referred to as Cherry and Others versus the Advocate General for Scotland. And you might cite it in that way if you're particularly interested in some of the Scottish specific issues raised in the case. If we're looking at that case involving uh, Peter Crudis, we've got a similar style of reference, except instead of UKSC, we see EWCA, space CIV, England and Wales, Court of Appeals, Civil, civil Section, uh, and then the ID number 171. Um, for our last court, the European Court of Human Rights, it looks like it's a neutral reference. It's actually not. Um, it is a, a one, another one of these references to a, a bound series of volumes, the reports and, of judgments and decisions of the European Court of Human Rights, abbreviated as ECHR. Um, I have often found it difficult to find the agreed references for these cases. However, um, it is often easier if you have the reference for the Wikipedia page, which is quite likely for a high-profile European Court of Human Rights case. Um, I've taken you through some examples there, but if you're looking for a general guide to citing court decisions, then the most commonly used standard in the UK is OSCOLA, the Oxford University Standard for the Citation of Legal Authorities, and I put the link there to the PDF describing that format. That all covers citing the decision in general, but it is also likely that you will be discussing the court's decision. And if you're discussing the court's decision, you will probably be using direct quotes. And you probably won't be citing page numbers because those probably won't appear 
Uh, but what you will be citing are the numbered paragraphs present in many court decisions. And you can use that paragraph number as though it were a page number to refer to a particular point in the text. And so that might look like uh, one of these two paragraphs. We might lead off saying that in the prorogation case, the court held that prorogation, quote, cannot sensibly be described as a proceeding in Parliament, since it is not a decision of either House of Parliament, but is imposed upon them from outside. And I just set that off by putting in brackets the number of the relevant paragraph. If I wanted to draw attention to the authors of that paragraph, if it was a decision which involved multiple opinions from multiple judges on the court, I might identify them by name before putting the paragraph. So that's a very, very brief overview of how to find court decisions and how to cite them.